Hey all, Matt Hepworth here, and today we are going to put this M1 versus Rosetta to bed. And I'm also going to do an Intel processor comparison later in the video. So right now, I have this loaded up in Rosetta, and as you can see, we're kind of rubbing against the top there. And thanks to the comment from Thomas in the previous video, we have got this figured out as to why everything is so spiky. And it turns out that it's Ampire, the Personas plugin. So if I kill any instances of Ampire, we get a much more stable, less spiky CPU. But unfortunately, we're going to need Ampire in this session, so we don't just have plain DI boring guitars. Walking through this session, you can see we have drums, we have bass, and we have a couple different guitars. We're using a combination of mics and direct signals, and no vocals yet. But this is a pretty good overall test for a real-life tracking session. Now, I'm at the absolute lowest buffer of 16 samples for all this. And at this buffer setting, we are possibly going to get a few glitches. So we're just going to record a bit and see how it reacts with Rosetta at 16 samples. <laughs> So usable, but definitely a decent amount of glitching happening there. Now, I've re-pulled up the same session, but this time on the M1 native processing. And let's see how it compares, also at 16 samples. <laughs> Surprisingly rough with the M1 native. I'm not sure what it is about the processing that hasn't been optimized for the M1, but it performed a lot better with the Intel wrapper through Rosetta. Now, the interesting thing is, it performs a lot better up until the point that Ampire is engaged, but of course, this session is using Ampire, so the optimization sure seems to be pointed at the amp sim in particular. Now, whether all amp sims are the same way, I can't really say because there are only a couple that are even M1 native at all in existence at the moment. The other being the one by Blue Cat Audio. And as you can see, the overall CPU is very low, you know, 40 to 50%. That is, up until the point that we bring Ampire in and start the spiking. So now, let's crash Studio One by trying to simply change the buffer setting. I feel like Studio One needs a warning label, because 9 times out of 10, if I try to change the buffer setting, I get a crash. This time is no exception. And there it goes. Alright, so we'll relaunch and we'll set up for 32 samples and continue that test. Okay, so now we're ready to go. 32 samples, M1 native processing. Here we go. <laughs> There, much better. Only a couple small glitches through that whole thing. Near perfect. Um, that's kind of what I would expect. But uh, we're just not seeing that at 16 at all. But at 32, things are about what my expectation would be. And please take a second to click the like button here. 
and post a comment down below if you like what we're doing or you want to see something done differently in future videos like this. But I don't think this test would be complete without comparing against my 2018 i7 6-core Mac Mini. Okay, so now here we are on the i7. We've got 12 cores now instead of the 8 that we were using on the M1. And you can see the CPU jumping around a little bit, but pretty low overall. It's looking like it's maybe even better performance than the M1. Let's uh, see what this is about and give it a go. Okay, wait a minute, what just happened here? That doesn't make any sense at all. Well, that's because we're at 64 samples instead of 16. And now let's switch to 16 and get a apples to apples, pardon the pun, comparison. Fingers crossed we don't get the crash. Hey, there it goes. Okay. So now the meter is pegged, and uh, it's kind of surprising that it's so pegged. And just because we're glutton for punishment, let's give this a go and see how bad the tracking experience would be. i7, 16 samples. <laughs> That sounds amazing. Okay, enough of that. But let's just give it a listen and see if it actually plays back. So we'll just select all the tracks. Disable record and disable input monitoring. And let's see what we have. So, even though it sounded like a bunch of demons in a blender during tracking, it actually plays back fine, which kind of says a lot about the robustness of the audio engine. But overall, I think it's safe to say that the i7 is greatly overshadowed by the M1 processor in both Rosetta and Native. And for sake of completion, let's circle back around and do 32 samples on Rosetta on the M1. And let's give that a go. So, there we have it. Perfect, flawless recording. And that was at 32 samples, M1 Rosetta. The uh, M1 Native at 32 samples had a couple really minor hiccups, whereas this one had none. So, in my opinion, there's definitely some level of fine-tuning on Personas' side that needs to be done for compatibility with M1. And lastly, let's do a quick back-to-back -back comparison with Rosetta versus M1 at 16 and Rosetta versus M1 at 32 samples.
And there we go. I think that's a great example that some optimization is still needed for M1 native to really work as well as even the emulated Intel functions, which is just kind of bizarre. But either way, it still outperforms the Intel systems. I hope this video was helpful. Please leave a comment and let me know whether it was. And as always, thanks for watching. Matt Hepworth, see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.